Transistors come in many shapes and sizes. There are two main types, the bipolar and the field effect. We're going to mostly focus on the bipolar version in this video. Transistors are small electronic components with two main functions. It can act as a switch to control circuits, and they can also amplify signals. Small, low-power transistors are enclosed in a resin case to help protect the internal parts. But higher power transistors will have a partly metal case, which is used to help remove the heat which is generated, as this will damage the components over time. We usually find these metal body transistors attached to a heatsink, which helps remove the unwanted heat. For example, inside this DC bench power supply, we have some MOSFET transistors, which are attached to very large heatsinks. Without the heatsink, the components quickly reach 45 degrees Celsius, or 113 degrees Fahrenheit, with a current of just 1.2 amps. They will become much hotter as the current increases. But for electronic circuits with small currents, we can just use these resin body transistors, which do not require a heatsink. On the body of the transistor, we find some text. This will tell us the part number which we can use to find the manufacturer's datasheet. Each transistor is rated to handle a certain voltage and current, so it's important to check these sheets. Now, with a transistor, we have three pins, labeled E, B, and C. This stands for the emitter, the base, and the collector. Typically, with these resin body type transistors with a flat edge, the left pin is the emitter, the middle is the base, and the right side is the collector. However, not all transistors use this configuration, so do check the manufacturer's datasheet. We know that if we connect a light bulb to a battery, it will illuminate. We can install a switch into the circuit and control the light by interrupting the power supply. But this requires a human to manually control the switch. So how can we automate this? For that, we use a transistor. This transistor is blocking the flow of current. So the light is off. But if we provide a small voltage to the base pin in the middle, it causes the transistor to start allowing current to flow in the main circuit. So the light turns on. We can then place a switch on the controlling pin to operate it remotely, or we can place a sensor on this to automate the control. Typically, we need to apply at least 0.6 to 0.7 volts to the base pin for the transistor to turn on. For example, this simple transistor circuit has a red LED and a 9 volt power supply across the main circuit. The base pin is connected to the DC bench power supply. The circuit diagram looks like this. When the supply voltage to the base pin is 0.5 volts, the transistor is off so the LED is also off. At 0.6 volts, the transistor is on, but not fully. The LED is dim because the transistor is not yet letting the full current flow through the main circuit. Then at 0.7 volts, the LED is brighter because the transistor is letting almost the full current through. And at 0.8 volts, the LED is at full brightness. The transistor is fully open. So what's happening is we're using a small voltage and current to control a larger voltage and current. We saw that a small change to the voltage on the base pin causes a large change on the main circuit. Therefore, if we input a signal to the base pin, the transistor acts as an amplifier. We could connect a microphone which varies the voltage signal on the base pin, and this will amplify a speaker in the main circuit to form a very basic amplifier. Typically, there is a very small current on the base pin, perhaps just one milliamps or even less. The collector has a much higher current, for example, 100 milliamps. The ratio between these two is known as the current gain and uses the symbol beta. We can find the ratio in the manufacturer's datasheet. In this example, the collector current is 100 milliamps and the base current is one milliamp. So the ratio is 100 divided by one, which gives us 100. We can also rearrange this formula to find the currents also.
Okay, that's it for this video, but to continue learning about electronics engineering, click on one of the videos on screen now and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and of course, theengineeringmindset.com.